Mechanics, today we're going to take a look at the math block featured in the mod pack for Scrap Mechanic. The math block has many functions inside that will perform operations on number values. Depending on the function, you will need a different amount of number inputs, but the math block will always output a single number value. To switch between functions, simply look at the math block and press E to move on to the next function. If you want to cycle through the functions in the other direction, you can crouch and press E at the same time to cycle backwards. If you're ever confused about how to use some of these functions, you can always enable the console in-game and a brief set of instructions will appear for each function in the math block. The first function is addition. Connect your number values to the math block and the math block will output the sum of all inputs. Even if you have more than two numbers to add together, the math block will add everything into a single output. Subtraction is a little different. If you have only one number input, the output will be the inverse of that number. Using more than one number input can give you different results, so this is where order of operations comes into play. Depending on the function, you may notice a white dot or symbol and a black dot or symbol. This will help you define in which order you want to perform the function. For subtraction, it is the white inputs minus the black inputs. In this example, we are doing 8 minus 4, but we can also do 4 minus 8. So that's something to keep an eye out for when using some of these functions. Multiplication is simple, just like addition was. The order of inputs does not matter for multiplication and will multiply all the inputs together. Division is a function where the order does matter. Again, we can see a white dot and a black dot to define the order of operations. The white number is divided by the black number. If you have more than one white number, it will add all of them together before dividing. Similarly, if you have more than one black number, it will add them all before dividing. Now what happens if we have a division that doesn't result in a whole number? This is where we come to the extra features of the number block that we didn't get to see in the last video. We can actually display decimal places of a number value using paint colors. Normally, we use the second row of colors to define which digit we're trying to display from a number value, where orange was the first digit, red was second, pink was third, purple was fourth, and so on. For decimal places, we use the top row of colors in the same way as before, except this time we're on the other side of the decimal point. Light orange is the first decimal place, light red is the second decimal place, light pink is third, light purple is fourth, and so on. So here, we can see the resulting value of 5 divided by 8 is 0 0.625. These top row colors can also be used to define decimal places in the counter block as well. In the last video, we saw that you can count up by tens or hundreds or any other digit depending on the color that activates the counter. So, using the top row of colors, we can count up by 0.1 or 0.01 or any fraction of a number that you need. It should also be noted that you can use any number input with the counter to count up by twos, by threes, by dozens, or by any amount that you want per tick. You can even count up by 2.001 or by pi. The amount you choose to count up by can be anything. But let's get back to the math block. Next, we have modulus, otherwise known as division remainder, a very useful function. For example, we can see that the remainder after dividing 10 into 3 is 1. And here is an easy way to tell if a number is even or odd by checking what remains after dividing by 2. Exponential function is also available. If only one input is provided, this will square the number, assuming a power of 2. A black number input defines the exponent, so you can perform a power of 3, 4, 5, anything you might need. The next function is square root, and similar to the previous function, a single input will assume a square root. However, you can also provide a black number input if you want to do a cube root or something greater. This function, with the two straight lines on either side, is called the absolute function. The absolute function will always output a positive number, converting any negative number into a positive one. The hypotenuse function will take two numbers, assume that they are the adjacent sides of a right angle triangle, and return the length of their hypotenuse. 
The logarithmic function is also available, and you can define the base on which it operates using a white number input. This e is Euler's number, a mathematical constant that is the base of the natural logarithm. This constant is the value that the logarithmic function assumes if you do not provide a white number input. And if you connect a number input into this function, it will use that number as the exponent for Euler's number. The math block also has a factorial function. If you don't know what factorial is, it multiplies your number input with every number before itself. But here's where we start to get away from just mathematical functions and start to get into the programming functions. This blank screen is a memory bit. A logic input will flip this bit, turning it on if it was off and off if it was on once per tick. You can use a white number input to define what action this memory bit will take. Connecting a white number with a value of 1 will tell this memory bit to always flip on, never off, even with repeated flips. Connecting a white number with a value of 2 will tell this memory bit to always flip off, never on. And a white number with a value of 0 is the same action as the default memory bit, flipping the value between on and off. So with this, you can change the action your memory bits will take with number logic. Next up, we have floor round and ceiling functions. The floor function will take your number inputs and will always round your number down to the previous integer. The round function is a normal round function and will round your number to the nearest integer. Ceiling is the opposite of floor, where the number inputs will always be rounded up to the next integer. Minimum and maximum functions are super useful. Min will look at all of the number inputs you connect and output the lowest of all the values. Maximum will do the opposite, looking at all the number inputs and returning the highest value. Here we have sine, cosine, and tangent functions. One thing to keep in mind with these functions is that they will assume your input is in degrees and not radians. Also available are the inverse functions, arc sine, arc cosine, and arc tangent. The math block also contains another useful constant, pi. You can also give this a number input to multiply pi. For example, 2 pi. The random function is very useful for games and artificial intelligence. If you don't provide any number inputs, the random function will return a random number between 0 and 1. You can connect a button, switch, or any logic input to activate the random function and get a new number. If you connect one number input, the random number will return a random number between 1 and your number. So an easy way to make a dice roll is to input the number 6, and the random value will be between 1 and 6. If you connect two number inputs, the random function will return a random number within the range that you defined. For example, you can get a random number between 2 and 12 to simulate what rolling two dice would give. Next, we have five comparison functions. First, we have greater than or equal to where the white number will be compared with the black number to see if the white value is greater than or equal to the black value. Next, we have less than or equal to, which is the same as before, but in the other direction. These functions will return a 1 or a 0 to indicate a true or false condition. Next is greater than. This will not return true even if the numbers are equal. The white value must strictly be greater than the black value. Less than is the same function, but in the other direction where the black number must be the greater number to return true. And the last comparison function is equal to, checking all of the number inputs to see if they are equal to one another. Finally, we come to the last three functions in the math block. This is the seated function. With a seat connected to this, you can check if someone is sitting in the seat or if the seat is empty. You can also connect multiple seats to this function, and it will count how many seats are occupied in total. Next, we have the AD converter, which will convert a steering signal to a number between negative 1 and 1. If the driver is not steering at all, the output will be 0. If the driver is steering to the left, the output will be between 0 and negative 1. If the driver is steering to the right, the output will be positive between 0 and 1. An interesting feature of this AD converter is that you can connect multiple driver seats to this block and the output will be the average of all the steering values. So with two driver seats connected, but only one person steering left, the output will be negative 
In that case, it will take both drivers to steer left to get a full value of negative 1. And if both drivers are steering in opposite directions, then the values will cancel out and the result will be 0. And finally, we have the WS converter. Similar to the AD converter, the WS converter will convert a drive signal from a steering seat and output a number between negative 1 and 1. If the driver is accelerating, the value will be a positive 1. If the driver is reversing, the value will be a negative 1. If the driver is not pressing W or S, the value will be 0. And just like before, if there are multiple driver seats connected to the WS converter, then the average of all the inputs will be the result. This means that only a fraction of the power will be used with only one out of many drivers accelerating. And opposite values will cancel each other out. There are a lot of functions in the math block, and how you use them is up to you. I know this was a lot to take in all at once, so just a few things to keep in mind. Press E on the math block to cycle through the functions, and E while crouching to cycle backwards. If you ever need some quick instructions, you can use the in-game console to see how to use a particular function. White and black numbers help define the order of operations and will be very important for your number logic. The top row of colors in the paints tool are used to display decimal places in the number blocks. It might seem overwhelming at first, and you might be confused at how any of this is even useful. This new number logic, with all these functions, opens up an entirely new world of possibilities in Scrap Mechanic, and personally I'm excited to see what you can create with it. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video, let us know what you want to see in the next video down in the comments below, and subscribe for more Scrap Mechanic mods. See you next time!